Yesterday, there were stories, first of all, that, you know, the virus could be reactivated in certain people. What do, you, what do we know about that? I mean, could it lie dormant, give you a negative result, and then it comes back, or is it too early to say? Yeah, it's a little too early to say. We, we know that individuals can shed viral RNA, meaning they can be positive for their nucleic acid-based test for long periods of time after um, um, their initial test. And we, we, it's difficult to differentiate that from a person who had an infection, cleared the infection, and then has become infected again via another source. So still needs a lot more work in this area. It's a very important uh, topic that everybody's keeping an eye on and is the focus of many laboratories um, around the world. But it's still too early to understand this, this concept of how frequently an individual can be reinfected um, after their first infection. And then we also had the story, uh, Andrew, this week about, uh, you know, uh, the virus lying in frozen foods coming from countries that maybe are still adversely affected from COVID-19. Again, what do we know about safety? I mean, th th these are, are products and packages. I think we talked about, you know, uh, frozen shrimps and frozen chicken wings that traveled hundreds of thousands of miles. Yeah, uh, you know, all the data that we have right now, is really suggesting that the primary means in which you acquire infection is really the respiratory route, meaning droplets, um, 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 talking, um, exposures in that way. And that's why masks and social distancing are such an effective means of stopping transmission. Um, contamination on surfaces and foods doesn't appear to be as strong um, a means of transmission as it is for other viruses, like rotaviruses, for instance, that often cause diarrheal diseases. So um, it's important to keep uh, good food chains in place. It's important to keep the um, standards high in terms of how food is being transmitted. But right now, it doesn't look like that seems to be a very uh, strong source of virus that's driving the outbreak. What is the right mask to use? I mean, we heard that mask with valves, valves, but, you know, are probably not the, the one that are recommended to be used. Yeah, you know, um, these face coverings um, um, are uh, an area that we're continuing to sort of evolve in terms of what, we're, uh, what, what works well in terms of transmission blocking. Um, you've seen a lot of people that wear these masks that have small valves on the side. Um, those are probably not the best to use to block transmission because those masks function to filter air that's coming in, but they don't do a good job of filtering the air that you're breathing out. And one of the principles that's important to understand is you wear a mask more to prevent you from spreading the virus when you are not showing symptoms than you are protecting yourself from other people, uh, from virus being spread from other people. So many of these valves don't really do a good job of stopping the virus par particles, the, uh, the virus droplets uh, that you're breathing out. And so you probably should avoid them um, if possible. Andrew, how do we look at New Zealand? So New Zealand almost had no new cases, and then because of an outbreak in one family, it's, you know, we're seeing many more cases. Can you study that and, and actually understand better how the virus moves? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, New Zealand was a, a fantastic example of how early and strong interventions can lead to prolonged periods in which the virus was um, really not circulating um, at all in the country. Um, now, this will be a test of New Zealand's contact tracing network, uh, which they've put in place and it was now being called on to try to identify these cases and uh, limit the spread of the virus without having to resort to another nationwide lockdown. And this is really what we want to do. This is what we, we should be doing in all countries around the world, getting the virus level down and now using testing and contact tracing to be able to uh, keep these small pockets of infections more limited instead of being broad, uh, broadly um, um, spreading. So all eyes are on New Zealand now to see how their public health infrastructure is going to respond uh, to this uh, surge of cases.